Look at this little Claire one here. I'm a fair sport wearing a Claire jersey here today, considering what's happened. Yeah, uh, it's it's funny. Like like I'm obviously back today, but you could also say the tipper back, back under holes. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie, there's no need for it. Do you know what? Isn't isn't it ideal that you're back today rather than last week when uh, a certain Timing is, is everything. Timing is everything, Shadow. Timing is absolutely everything. This, this, it was here this time last week. Um, I would have taken a fair hammering, but sure, listen, a week is a long time in hurling. Um, I think, what is it? Is it two championship wins out of your last 12? I hear a lot now. We'll chat about it a bit more. I hear a lot of people saying, you know, that, you know, some people saying that Tip got rid of her manager and look at where they are this year. But to me, there was an awful lot of improvements this year. But that was really disappointing Saturday evening. It was a bit of a no show, to be honest with you. And you have to say, like, the Offaly game aside, which, you know, was a turkey shoot, two of their last three performances had been really poor. Like, yeah. really, really poor. They haven't shown up. Um, and I wonder, you know, just even thinking about it, does does Liam Cahill have a small bit of a problem with the round robin in his you know even when he was with Waterford and now a tip about maybe peaking too soon or peaking too soon in the season potentially as well but uh tip are gone everyone's happy and the hurt let the let the hurt let the real hurling season commence henceforth and uh, brilliantly we've gotten this far into the show without talking about Tipperary being out of the championship so fair play hey Shano I also noticed as well how you referred to Dublin as we a couple of minutes ago it's amazing how you how you jumped ship so quickly well I, I don't know if that's on the strength of what happened at the weekend yeah well I, I didn't want to bring it up because uh, as well as winning the quarter final <laughs> the, the, the camaraderie and uh, the friendship shown to yourself and my my, my sports um, re, um Man in Claire FM, Derek Lynch, like that. That really made my day. Claire winning, you and 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 Derek talking, and then I went home and I watched Guns and Roses on Glastonbury. So it was a great evening. <laughs> <laughs> it could could it be a better day for Claire people, uh, Tommy, than Claire booking their place in the Ireland semi final and then Tip exiting the championship about an hour and a half later. Well. There was a lot of smug faces and lads hiding behind things going out the gears in the Gaelic grounds. But look at, uh, I mean, I, I I I stayed and I watched it not for any to hope to see Tip beat or that just purely from a hurling point of view. Yeah, Tip were disappointing, no doubt about it. Um, I think you know they came with great expectations. Um, you know, would have been disappointed not to make that monster final. And I'm not sure how much that altered their their preparation. Were they peaking for that? But um, very, very disappointing. You know, we know Tip have the hurlers, but they just struggled, I think, in the first minute, the first uh, half to make any impact uh, as the forwards. You know, players of, you know, Mark Kehoe, Jake Morris, Shami Kell and Jason Ford. We, they just... It looked like that. I won't. I don't want to be disrespectful, but they were clueless. They were running into contact, losing the ball. Uh, you know, and, and again, I think only for, you know, if Connor Whelan had been, you know, uh, he could have had three goals before half time, and the result could have been a whole lot worse. Now credit, I'm not sure it's credit due to Tip for coming back. They were eight points down, or for Galway losing that lead. But uh, yeah, disappointment for Tip. I think um, Galway would be happy to get over the line and. Uh, you know, into the semi-final, but tip, uh, you know, another winter of of um, of of Todd, Todd. You know, they just need to. I don't know. I, I suppose they're in transition. I suppose maybe the expectations based on Liam Cahill's return may have been too high in his first year. I'm sure he'll go back and he'll review. And uh, I don't think Tip will be going away. But uh, another ye year out. Yeah, and again, while Claire are in the Ireland semi final and Tip are out, uh, you know, we'll be happy in Claire, I suppose. <laughs> Basically, Not... Tommy, what you're saying is disappointment for Tip, joy for everybody else. Yeah, go away. But joy you? for Claire, I can only speak from Claire, and, 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 and uh, you know, but um, look at every, every man for himself. Shane is, I'm sure, will be well able to defend uh, the, the, the Tip side of it. And, uh, We'll look in depthly as he usually does about uh, where Tip went wrong, and I'm sure we we'll, won't be shy in finding out where, what needed to be done. That's four years in a row now to, to try and analyze where it went wrong. Niall, let's talk about the positives of Galway. <laughs> Dominated this game, to be fair. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, I think just made it into a battle to, to close that space up the back. And I think what was really interesting was the, were the performances for pe players like Sean, Sean Lanan, Keenan Fahey. 
and they really came to the fore. Tom Mahan, Tom Mahan came on and got three points. Um, Evan Nyland was busy. Like those guys really stepped up. Um, you know, Keenan Fahey in particular was a really good target uh, under the bookouts. Sean Anand did a fantastic job on the likes of Noel McGrath. So I think that was a real positive. Darren Morris, he was really solid at cornerback. And then you had people like Dahi Burke driving out. Uh, the two Mannions were, were, ex- were exceptional. And, um, you know, the other thing was when you, when you look at when Galway can feed ball and get good ball into the likes of Conor Whelan and Kevin Cooney, um, the damage they can do. And I felt at times, you know, over the year, and even last year, uh, that uh, Whelan has to work so hard at, to win the ball. Uh, but when it's put in front of him like that, you know, he, he is he is a threat. And I think that goal just after half time, really, I suppose, you know, that was the gap in the end. Um between Tip and Galway, so I think Galway, Galway would be very, very pleased um, with their performance, particularly after the Leicester final. And you could, you could see Henry after the game and just looked at his interview yesterday again. And I suppose the, you know, he nearly the emotion uh, he showed having having come and having um, I suppose having put that Leicester final uh, to bed and uh, the performance they got from that. So I think Galway, uh, particularly from some of the, the newer players like Kevin Cooney, Fahey, um, Sean and Anne, I think I think they'd be really happy with that. Just a word, Niall, on Cottle Mannion's role. Uh, I couldn't believe yeah. that that tip just put ball down on top of him and didn't occupy him. Um, he, he was basically free for nearly the whole game. One of the best, like one of the best ball strikers, one of the best link men, one of the best distributors. Like I couldn't believe that, but it's yeah. a kind of a new role for him uh, in recent games. And like. I, I, I'd love, he must have had 25 possessions and I'd say he hardly gave away one of them he's so influential he's a like he's a brilliant ball striker isn't he when you when you look at him like he's really accurate really good in the ball can carry ball well and I think if you're if you're playing against that I think Tip didn't help themselves in striking the ball from the 21 I think that just gives people like Manion a chance to get across the pitch get on the ball and that was the interesting thing about Tip, where they, they, they've gone away from their plan of working the ball out, and they reverted back to, I suppose, uh, long ball from from sixty, seventy yards out. And uh, I suppose when people, you've, someone like Colin Mannion, at the end of that, like he's going to hurt you. He's going to carry the ball. He's going to get it into the key forwards, like like uh, like Whelan. And, and it was interesting to see that Tip didn't either didn't put a man a marker on him just get a forward out there to occupy him or if you know that that he's a free man that you just need to get the ball higher up the pitch you just need to get the ball higher up the pitch before you get it in there and 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 get it down the wings and uh that didn't happen from a from a tip point of view which was which was probably strange to see Mm, yeah like uh, looking at Tipperary I mean ultimately they saw that Galway were sitting back hugely and what that meant was that at times Conor Whelan was inside the 45 at the other end of the pitch one v one with Ronan Maher, maybe twenty yards in front. When Galway came out with the ball after Tipperary had just lumped it down onto numbers as if that was going to work, they ended up just blasting, uh, hitting lovely ball up the field for Whelan. And like Carl Barrett, who hasn't played in five weeks, you know he was given the impossible task of trying to keep into Conor Whelan. And with Whelan after scoring one six in the Leinster final, like his confidence has turned around. Mm. He's in the hurler of the year conversation Niall, now, surely. Ah, uh, yeah, like um, he's. He's been fantastic, and I, I think he's really. I, I, you look at the, look at him in the Leinster final, playing wing forward, and, and it, then use the inside gesture. So he's really coming to the fore. Um, but but, but I, I think part of that, Shane, is is Galway uh, kind, of, kind of are using him better. I, I think I think they've been guilty in the past of, you know, he, for me, if he, if there was a transfer market, you know, he's he's the first forward I'd be I'd be looking at because he's. He's so physical. He's one to one forward that can win his win his own ball, and then once he gets it, it's impossible to take it off him. Uh, and now Galway have have have, have, uh, have learned to, to feed him properly. So I think he's a he's a he's a really he's a, he's he's just one of those forwards where um, you have to keep your eye on him, and that even if the ball is lumped in, there's still a, still a chance of him getting his hand to it or getting touched to it because he's he's so physical. So. I think he's on fire, and um, I think he'll be he'll be he'll be a handful for Limerick in a couple of weeks. And and also, Niall, you know, there's all this talk about Tipperary and did they peak too soon and train too hard and all. And like, I'm not asking you to comment on another county per se because obviously you're operating in Leinster there as well. You don't want to be commenting too hard on how other counties are specifically going. But how much do you have to deal with when you're trying to deal with the league and energy wise and peaking and all this stuff coming into a round robin? Yeah. It, 
I presume maybe the accusations now thrown at Liam Cahill will be that it had to get fitter, and it's probably the opposite. To be honest, I think uh, I think it's so hard uh, to, to manage uh, a season, and and you know even my experience at Wexford, you know you, you'd work closely with the S and C coach coaches around your your you know periodizing your your training plan for the year to ensure that you can peak at, at the right time, and um, I've no doubt Tipperary. Uh, you know, did that. Obviously, it looked like they were flat the last the last couple of games, and I think they'll probably just have to go and review that. Um, they've they've introduced some new players again this year. I think I uh, heard heard uh, Liam Sheedy say last night they probably had a tough winter, but uh, but that'll probably stand to them next year. You're, those guys are probably coming back now with a with a higher base, but it, but it, but I think from a league perspective, and even the I suppose when you look at the Munster Championship, tip have tip have had to come through. There's They've had to be ready for every game, and you know that's 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 uh, that takes its toll too. So um, there's there's careful planning and consideration, and that needs to take 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 time and take uh, during those seasons. And I've no doubt Tip have done that, and they will have learned. No doubt they'll have, they will have, they will have learned from from this season. And as Tommy said, they're not gone away. Um, they they will be back and. Uh, I think Liam, as you could see, he was just really disappointed in the flatness of that performance. And you know, sometimes it's just very hard uh, to put your finger on that. It, it, sometimes that can be just a, as much mental as physical. That's and uh, you know, o- only the players really know um, the root cause of that. I guess you could actually nope. hear him as well during the game. Um, you could hear him shouting at Rhys Shelley during yeah. the game as well to speed things up. There was no, um, there was just no zip or energy to tip. It was a kind of a, it was a weird one. And even I think. The, the long ball that you were talking about now, I think that's that can even be a tiredness kind of thing. That the yeah. the effort, both mental and physical, to work it through the lines that requires a huge amount of energy uh, on both sides. But it was just, yeah, I just I, I I'll throw this back to you as well, Night. As as encouraging as it was to see that Galway performance, it must be hugely frustrating as well because like they should have been out of sight really. Uh, if they put the boot down and deliver a seventy five minute performance, you'd imagine they could beat anybody, but. They nearly left Tip in that game. Like Tip could have easily won the game at the end. Yeah, it, the game came alive. You know, fifty minutes gone, the game came alive. Then the last twenty minutes, Tip Tip were on the comeback. Um, I think, you know, John McGrath was, you know, was influential coming on, and maybe he's just uh, I'm not sure why he's not starting. It. It's it's it's. Uh, but he for me, he's a he's a top forward, and uh, I think he made a difference when he came on. Um, I think Galway would be disappointed the fact that the, you know they were probably chewing off their, fi- their their fingernails coming down the stretch when they had so many chances to win it. And even when you look back at at the Limerick game last year, I think Galway had enough chances to to maybe to me win, win that game. So I think their their execution and I, to be fair uh, to, to some of those players, once you, you listen to them afterwards, uh, I think they've referenced that that their execution needs to be better and it's certainly something to go after. But I think. Uh, I think it's Limerick. You, you, you just need to take in all your chances, um, and uh, no doubt it's something that Galway will will uh, will have on the on the work on in the next couple of weeks. Mm. Adrian McGrath says here, Liam Cattle was one Waterford point from being out and produced a disaster tactically in hurling yesterday. Yet there's little or no criticism. Just lads nearly sympathising with him. Uh, at the far side of the football, I'll come back and Bernie's going to quiz me hard about Tipperary. So I'll I'll do a bit, bit more jaw about that then. Tommy, um, how good are this Galway team? Well, potentially, you know, they, they, they're all excellent hurler. I, I, as I said, as, as Nyla said there, I mean, if they can put together a 70, 75 minute per consistent performance, they're up there with the best of them. And I think winning against Tipperary will give them great heart and encouragement. I think they won't fear Limerick. I think, you know, that they will go on and think that, you know, they have a chance. And I, and I do believe that they, that they have. But I think they need to be more consistent. There's times... You know, if you looked at their season, which has fluctuated up and down, the Galway went down 12 points to Dublin and came back. They went down, you know, to, they went down against Kilkenny, uh, came back, looked like they couldn't hold it yesterday or Saturday up eight points. I think they need to, you know, at certain times in the game, they just need to manage it better and not allow the opposition. And again, you know, opposition will have their time on top. I think it's it's limit the damage on the scoreboard. And you know, I thought it was interesting that Galway, yeah, that Shefflin in an interview after made it quite clear that Galway set out to make it a battle. Um, did that suspect that 
maybe that tip wouldn't be up for it. That tip may have wanted a more open style game, and Galway knew that they could, you know, beat him in a tough, tight, um, physical game. Go on, Tommy Boy, that's the job. You know, Throw and, and that's yeah, there's no doubt. Like, I mean, and again, <laughs> what, <laughs> where. But, but, like, I mean, I think it's everyone has agreed. Tip have the players. But if you allow the tip players to play, they will play and they will hurt you. I mean, how undercooked were they yesterday, you know, coming into the game? Since the Munster Championship, what, what would they have done? How would they have gauged themselves? And then, now, Michael, no disrespect to Offaly. You know, there was a no test against Offaly. Yeah. It, it wasn't ideal. I think, you know, Galway came off, had hurt after losing to Kilkenny, had a real cause. Claire would have felt that they left the Munster final and we had a cause. I think Tip were kind of somewhere in the unknown as to where they were and their performance reflected that yesterday, I think. And when it came down to it, I think Galway, you know, reveled in the, the physical battles and I think, you know, won them all. And again, you know, I was talking to Ken Hogan, the Tip FM analysis, and um, I thought, you know, Bonner Maher, it was a game meant for, you know, suited Bonner Maher, but he was out injured. Someone to win that dirty ball, Pass it off to you know Kehor that they just couldn't get their hands on primary ball from a tipper there, and that's probably something that Cal is going to look at. It's not all about the flair; it's it, it's the fight. They need to get the uh, you know get get the mix right there. And I think you know coming into the game, Cal probably in his first year in Tipperary put put a big effort in very early on. You know, year two he may do things differently. From a clear point of view, Brian Lohan is there four years, Shefflin is there two or three years. You know, you, you have to tweak from year to year to plan your to, to plan your plan your peaking. And obviously, you know, tip were flat yesterday for one reason. I'm sure they'll they'll look at it. But uh, at the end of the day, I think Galway wanted it more fronted up better and uh tip were found wanting. Lads, you- Absolutely brilliant stuff from John. Could listen yeah. to him all day. Yeah, brilliant stuff. I don't know how we've gotten to an hour and 38 minutes in the show before we've actually realised, or I need to ask the question, like what, what is going, what's going on in Tipperary and what happened on Saturday night? Well, look, we, we, we should tee it up with Dennis Ryan's comment here. Gormless Shane doing some squirming this morning. <laughs> File under things you love to see. <laughs> and Owen Green followed that up by saying, lads, Tip won one game all year and are the most overrated bunch of hurlers ever. Either good athletes who can't hurl or good hurlers who can't run. True story. Now, he has really gone for Tipperary. Look, Tipper desperate. Don't get me wrong. Tipperary, Galway should have won this game by 10 points. And I thought they tactically outdid Tipperary. I thought they outfought Tipperary. I think Tipperary made mistakes with how they selected the team. Um, look, James Callan wanted to, like, basically the goal from Tipperary at this stage. 40 championship goals, unbelievable. But he's had so many injuries, and I'm not sure he was right for this game. And then Galway sat back and tip hit long ball in on top of him. What do you expect is going to happen there when you've got Dahi Burke in front? You've got Road McInerney behind, Park Mannion drifting in as well. So I don't think that that was the right selection. I think Jake Morris was like, he didn't puck a ball. Mark Yo didn't puck a ball. Obviously, two of the three were taken off at half time. If Tipperary wanted to try and beat you from distance, the two wing forwards, I mean, nominally wing forwards, I suppose, Alan Tynan, he got a couple of points. James Kendy got a couple of points. But it's not like, for example, when you ha- if you had Noel McGrath constantly in scoring position on wing four, and Sean Lennon sat in his shorts. He was not letting him get on the ball. Now, it w- it might have been, like, Noel could have had two or three points after 15 minutes, and the game kind of went away from him after that. Yeah. Delivered a, delivered a couple of killer passes, but he was unusually off target the other night. Yeah, so, like, Tipperary weren't in a position where they could kill you from distance because it's not like they worked the ball up to, you know, a certain amount of the pitch and then were comfortable to sort of, you know, do triangles around the sidelines and have shooters uh, kill and go away from distance so that they would have to be drawn out the field. Like, Tipperary, realistically, should have tried to sit back and choke the backline because they ended up with 2v1, Ronan Maher plus Cahill Barrett versus Conor Whelan inside their own 45. Now, it was Kevin Cooney before that. And it just didn't work for Tipperary. And Cahill Barrett hadn't played in five weeks since that game against uh, Limerick when he got the concussion. So how are you... It's going to be very difficult for him to come in and lock down arguably the most explosive forward in massive space. So I just felt really sorry for him. You know, a bit like what Keen Nolan had against Aaron Gillan in a way, albeit maybe not quite to that same level. Of course not to that same level. But it was just He overcommitted himself a couple of times. Well, and isn't that the thing? When you're not fully fit, you're not fully right, you often dive out for balls that aren't there. 
and there was Better a answer. little and Quillen was just he was really cute and used his bit of strength without fouling him as well. Well, isn't that the difference between a lad who's on top of his game and a lad who's like you know didn't even yeah. play the week before against Offaly? There's no way that you wouldn't have played Barrett last week. If he wasn't right for last, well, week. if Craig Morgan had gotten through last week, he probably would have played again this week. That's probably and Craig nice Morgan challenge. wasn't right against that. Like obviously, yeah. he's coming back. He's passed every uh, fitness test and all that to make sure his crucial is up to it. But you can see he wasn't up to a hundred percent either. So whether yeah. it was a hamstring cramp or whether he wasn't fit to play this weekend, I think the decision was made with the performance that he wasn't quite ready for something like this. So Tipperary were out fought. They were out gunned. The you know the team selections. But, like, I don't know if Gerard O'Connor wasn't fit to start the game. He went off injured against Waterford. He obviously came on against Offaly last week. But the difference he made when he came in. Huge, you know, he, yeah. You know, he got... He, he got was in. a ball winner, Shane. He, he didn't have... He, and, and it's something... It's a problem you have. And, like, I would have always said, like, five, six, seven, eight years ago, that Bonner was your most important forward because he, he offered something that maybe no other tip forward did, that he could win that primary ball. Like, he... You were Laurie, you were trucking ball down, and it's one thing trucking ball down if you have a couple of big lads with big paws that can win a 50 50 ball or a 40 60 ball, but you couldn't get your hands on primary ball at all the other night. Yeah, look, I, I you just have to give Galway most of the credit for this, but Tipperary were poor, and like you know, we I kind of explained away the Waterford game by saying, Look, you played Limerick the week before, that probably took a huge amount out of the team. Um, Morris and Kyle Barrett weren't playing, so that's two of your paciest players also out of the team. You know, I was will, you know, they were hyped up to the last against the Waterford team that were, you know, downtrodden, that were spoken about publicly about having nothing between the, you know, legs and all, and all this kind of stuff. But I think Tipperary here again, it was poor across the board. Tip were beaten by the better team and should have been hammered. But I would say that you can't ignore the amount of players that are between the ages of 22 and 27. That were missing for this game, and eventually it has. What do you want to say that Tipperary over were overcooked earlier in the season, or whatever you want? You can't ignore the difference that Barry Heffernan, who has really shut down Connor Whelan the last few times he's played against him in um, in matches, like he really has done a brilliant job at him. So you don't have Barry Heffernan, massive player, and he's he's back for Nina now. And you know, if the season went on or was two months later, he'd probably be playing at the moment. Craig Morgan, have him fully fit. Paddy Cadell, Jerry Brown. I'm not saying all these lads start, by the way. But Grodo O'Connor having him fully fit. Bonner Maher not being available there. People will say I'm just making excuses, excuses, excuses. Or am I just saying that Tipperary are missing four or five lads here who are physically strong, who are powerful guys? Like the sideline got it wrong with the with the selections here in, in ways as well. And in terms of like tactically being outdone. But there's a lot of reasons why... You don't just say, ah, look, forget the whole thing. Tipperary should improve next year. Got out of Munster this year, albeit by the skin of the teeth. But it was just the manner of some of the defeats last year. There's no doubt that Tipperary have improved. You know I'll peel Tipperary if I get half a chance. Oh, but, these would have But Tipperary improved no end this year compared to last year. Like, it's not even it's not even comparable. Even when you put it to, like, you know, bums and seats following Tipperary. Like, Tipperary have a big following now again. Cattle and the buzz around that seems to have brought brought with that. They qualified for Munster, albeit you know fortuitously enough at the end. They should have been in a Munster final. Um, but to me, as as a first year from from Cattle and Co, I, I wouldn't say it was a bad year. They were beaten in the league semi final by by Limerick. Um, they were beaten in the Ireland quarter final by by Galway. It should have probably been beaten by more last year. They would like last year they were beating double figures in nearly every game. Let's call a spade a spade. That's just the nature of the finished bottom of Munster with, with no points. Um this year with probably yeah, as you said, four to five important players, I would say, not available for selection. Uh, and like I was looking down through the squad the other day, and with due respect to everybody's there, you're looking down and thinking it's shallow enough beyond 18 or 19 so he i'm sure from cattle's point of view he'd be hoping um that he gets a better kind of you know a better uh run with injuries next year interesting to see whether and he's had a phenomenal career whether we see seamus callan in, in a tipperary jersey again whether we see patrick bonner Mar in a tipperary jersey again potentially even whether we see noel mcgrath in a tipperary jersey again like three absolute warriors for uh, the Premier down through the years. Of the three of them, I'd say the most likely that we're going to see is, is Noel McGrath because I thought he had a brilliant season outside of the other day. Even against Waterford, he was one of the few that was throwing it down to them in a really, really bad performance. Just didn't have a just didn't have a go on day the other day. 
But yeah, like uh, as I, as I said, it, it definitely wasn't all bad for Tipperary this year. Definitely not. Yeah, Norm McGraw will be thirty three at the very end of the year. If he feels he can go again, who knows? Maybe he'd be a starter, maybe not. But obviously, he's still a player that I think Tipperary could use. Like Bonner, Bonner Maher was injured. A question here from AP one two three, and definitely he's someone you would have liked to throw in. I probably wouldn't have taken Mark Kyo off. And he didn't play well, and it was a ball that he spilled when he could have got in behind during the first half of the game. Fair enough, but I, I just think he's a player you leave out there. Connor Bow didn't really happen for him, although he do, was rugby tackled by Sean and Anne late in the game and tipped for three points behind. Now, this was obviously 45 yards out or whatever, <laughs> and I've no issue with Look, Galway should have won by 10 points. Don't get me wrong, but you know I've come back to this rule time and time again. It was two years ago when um, Galway did a three years ago when Rug, Galway did a rugby tackle on Tipperary that the black card was guaranteed to come in, and yet again they've done it here. And it just comes back to the whole point that I keep saying: cynical rugby tackle fouls do not happen unless you're trying to stop a goal. Why was Sean Lennon doing a rugby tackle out 45 yards in the sideline? He wanted to make sure Tipperary didn't have an opportunity to score a goal. They should always be penalties, and they'll stop it because we were denied an exciting last few seconds. And I'm not saying it out of bitterness, but it's ridiculous that this rule isn't everywhere on the pitch. I keep saying it. Like, defenders of the black card. Well, did it stop cynicism? No, it didn't. Uh, it stopped It stopped, uh, stopped a good bit of cynicism close to the goal within within that area. Yeah, but it doesn't but go that, far enough. Yeah, outside of that. Yeah, I, I don't think anywhere on the pitch. I'd probably be All right. inside the 65. Maybe, when does a like rugby that, tackle maybe. happen? Do you ever see a rugby tackle at the top? No, you, the no, no you do, Never. yeah. You, de- you definitely do. 100% and why, and why, do. why stop, would it to happen? Stop, to stop the play. Just to stop the play and kill 30 seconds. And to ensure that what doesn't happen at the other end? The team uh, doesn't score. No, not the, like if, if the ball is on the far 45, it's, it does not smell of a goal opportunity. It's just to stop to break momentum a lot of the time. Yeah, but generally you're breaking momentum so that the other team can't get what they need, which is scores. The only way to stop these things is to punish no, them. No, I, I, like... I personally think that's way too far back. I would say inside the 65. Um, I would say inside the attacking 65. I think, I, I yeah, but you, what you're suggesting there is so far away from ever coming in. That will, nev- that will never come in. Because but that, that doesn't mean it shouldn't. Because, at, like, even if they move it out to the 45 or the 65... Then you'll start seeing the rugby tackles happen further up the field again, even more so. Like, but sure, if it gets to that, we'll move it back twenty meters every time. If it, if it gets to that, I don't think it, I don't think it will get to that. Absolute but um, the good question, good question came in actually here. They just said to rate uh, to rate cattle zero out of ten. I would probably say something like five and a half, six, maybe. Yeah, a C. I suppose you'd rate it a C, basically. Um, like Tipperary were were decent. Like the league was a favourable side of the league for Tipperary. Let's call a spade a spade. So it's grand. Went down to Nolan Park, you know, bossed that game against Kilkenny up by twelve at half time, one by six, whatever it was. Saw off Watford, albeit the red card made a big difference that day. Had some other okay victories. Monster very good at times, but obviously only won one game. Um, drawn with Limerick, Grand, drawn with Cork, should have won that game. And, you know, again, you're talking about being down bodies and Jason Ford was out for a while and all that kind of stuff. Terrible against Waterford, terrible in the game the other day. And obviously the game against Offaly, is it even worth talking about? Of course, you no, were conveniently it, not here last no, week. Well, well, it's not worth talking but about. But look, so I, I would say a C. I'm not overly impressed with Tipperary, but given the, the levels of disinterest that were in the county 12 months ago and the how disillusioned everyone was, People now are interested in the team again, and that makes a big difference. No, hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. And listen, I think that I think I think they'll build. Um, it's just it's cut, two of the last three performances were so flat, like just you know, amazingly flat, really. When you consider what was on the line against Waterford and what was on the line against Galway, just very, very flat. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe does does Cattle have a small bit of an issue with? the element of peaking and timing the peak within a round robin. But when you are when you're you know, when you're going and splooding good. Easy time in, to peak when in, you're in, over in Leinster. No, no, I'm just that's what if you let me finish, I was just gonna say I won't. But with the blood and guts of Munster, I think the primary thing was to get out of Munster. And I think that, you know, everything after that was probably a bit of a bonus. But I do think they'd be as I said, they probably will be missing a couple of elder states from next year, maybe. Um, but they'll probably have a few other faces back. What you make of this comment? 
keep the pain going, Bernie. Keep pulling the sword out. Sorry. When it's like this, uh, P174, like today is one day, but Thursday will be another day, and next Monday will be another. You know what I mean? Like that, it'll, it'll keep, it'll keep going. It's not going to go away. Yeah, and should we talk about Dublin a little bit? Or, or sorry, no, actually, I, I actually wanted to talk about Keenan Fahey. What a performance there, Connor Cooney. He's left on the bench. Um, Finton Burke's left on the bench. Sean Lennon comes in, has a very good game, and I thought Keenan Fahey scored two points. He set up. He won freeze. He set up a couple of scores for other players. There was one score at the end that I thought was really important, one for, you know, when he took down the puck out with the stick and then yeah. straight down to his hand in traffic. Then he popped it to Evan Nyland and he ran across the defender that was trying to hook him. It was brilliantly done. Like yeah, he was the leader. Yeah. It was a bit, of a, a bit of a coming of age kind of game, particularly when he was mostly needed, I would say, in the, the latter stages. I thought Evan Nyland's role was really interesting as well. A lot of the time he was backing his own, like 30 yards out from his own goal, getting hooks and flicks in. Like it's probably, if we were talking about Evan Nyland, that's probably not a role that we would have described him as. And, and even uh, as a creator, for Whelan's great points where, uh, where he, got, he got Barrett to, to buy what he was selling and dive in, like it was Nyland that held on to the ball for five or six seconds and gave a lovely pass. That was a lovely, uh, that was a lovely Galway team move as well. I think from a Galway point of view, there is an exciting possibility there in that in what they done well the other night. If they're able to bring that up another fifteen or twenty percent, you're thinking maybe they could really, really throw it down to Limerick. But they, they, if they leave doors open like they did for Tip the other night to do that against Limerick, the Limerick will absolutely barrel through them. Yeah, Richard Hogan, in fairness, Tommy Gilfoyle put it best today. Who'll win the All-Ireland? Well, it won't be Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy was great stuff. We must get him on uh, again and talk about the Lachlan days, seeing as they're both fecal men. Uh, Ace Holly 180, Nyland threw a lot of ball that he would usually be turning and taking on shots, or threw yeah. a lot of ball, threw it around. Yeah, no, he was very, very good. Like, to me, it feels like there's a bit of a coming of age with this Galway team. Henry Shefflin would probably have been disappointed not to get big, championship wins or win a Leinster title in his first two seasons or one and a half seasons up to now but now you look at this forward line and Brian Kincannon didn't really get it done the other day and he's a good player like look I had him down for an all-star in 2020 which he didn't get but I would have had him in the running for that but you look at Kevin Cooney now he's becoming a real focal point the last 15 minutes of Leinster final I thought early on in this game especially set up a great goal chance for Conor Whelan that he should have finished and you know what's great he doesn't need to score you know, and no. I know he took on a couple of shots, but those sort of players are crucial creators. Yeah, so Kevin Cooney, Evan Nyland, Keenan Fahey now. I mean, a year ago we were talking about that stamp he did in the Leinster final and, um, you know, the frustration around that and, you know, what would we get out of him? But now he looks like a serious player. Sean Lennan, like that was, I would have thought, ah, oh, he's a bit of an old hurler. You know, I, I don't mean that in a bad way, but, you know, he's a hurler. I would have thought Evan Nyland, he's a hurler. But Lennan showed a bit of grit, a bit of dirt when it was required to rugby tackle, pulling and dragging the jersey out of Noel McGrath. He wasn't just going to let him do a bit of hurling. So Shefflin has brought a little bit of ignorance, a bit of steel to these lads. That I mean yeah, that the only, yeah, the only thing is, Shane, like, it was the same against Cork last year. There was a bit of steel when their backs were to the wall. Do you know what I mean? Do their backs need to be to the wall to produce that type of performance? There's going to be a bit of expectation coming into the Limerick game. With expectation comes a bit of pressure. Are they going to you know, I know they played well in last year's All Ireland semi final, but like, why did their backs need to be to the wall to see to, for the real Galway to stand up? Do you know what I mean? And that's the big question going into the semi final now. Yeah, that bot asked me, Shane, would your view on cynicism be the same if a Tipperary player pulled down a Clare player 40 yards out, 45 yards out from the goal? Bernie, I think you would say across the board that if whether it's a tip person being on the wrong end of it or the right end of it, I do call it out. Like, people were on about earlier in the year that I was giving out about head high challenges from Limerick or whoever. Rona Maher did the one on, was it Darren Fitzgibbon? Straight away I tweeted, yeah, that should be a red card. So I think I'm pretty consistent with these things. No, he's consistent that. He's a little more passionate when there's a temporary man in box, but he's consistent in fairness. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything we haven't covered? No. Um, we, we, haven't done, we haven't done our go of the week yet, actually. Oh. Yeah. Um, and like I, I, I would go off the beaten track a small bit. I thought Conor Whelan was brilliant the other night for God, don't get me wrong. But I thought Cotton Mannion, um, Cotton Mannion totally dictated the game. Now, partly was that he let him dictate the game, which is amazing, really. Um, how you could leave probably the best distributor on the pitch, how you could leave him free. Uh, like, even if Callan or Kyo occupied Mannion and left one of the other lads free, left Grealish free or left Morrissey free, you'd say something. But I thought Cotton Mannion totally dictated the game. 
Um, someone said to me there recently, could Cotton Mannion play six for Galway? And I was thinking, oh, jeez, I don't know, could he? he? He could probably definitely play a modern six uh, for Galway now, I'd say, the way he's playing at the moment. So, be Cotton Mannion uh, in the hurling for me, anyway. Yeah, it would be Keenan Fahey for me. I just thought he was absolutely brilliant. Like Conor Whelan, I know he scored, what was it, 1-4 from play, and that's Frank in his form from 1-6 in the Leinster final, and he's now probably favourite for hurler of the year. But to me, Keenan Fahey, to produce that performance when you've been sitting on the bench, and Liam Kerr in the football, 3-2 in the Talchon Cup semi-final. I know Leash were fairly pitiful, but that's fair going. Yeah, Conor McCarthy for me, and I just think his the way he plays now, the fact that he's a wing-back. Like I remember seeing him in Sigerson finals for uh, for UCD, like he's a left-footed wizard, corner forward. But the way football has changed now, he's as, a, as effective as an attacker playing wing back as he is as a corner forward kind of where he would be bottled up thought he was brilliant and uh, he uh, he definitely had a couple of game changer moments and uh, Adrian McGrath says tip missing lads none of them are any better than the lads <laughs> that are there um, Raymond Gil- uh, Gilburn says question for Vernie when was the last time the Limerick Hurlers covered the handicap in a championship hurling match oh fair question um, that definitely hasn't been this year anyway in a championship match uh, wouldn't have been really last year either yeah, no, that's what I said. The last nine games, uh, the biggest winning margin in championship, I think, has been three. Um, oh, wait, no. And that could have been after extra time in the Munster final last year. It's like 2-2, two, 1-1. Two, one, one. I said it was clutch, and it is clutch. But there's, there's also an element of hanging on. Yeah. And that's why yeah, Limerick are favourites to win the All-Ireland. Would you be that surprised if they're beating a the semi-final? You wouldn't. Sorry, three points was against Galway in the All-Ireland semi-final last year. And that's been their biggest winning margin in the last nine games. I think that's what makes the semi-final so exciting. Would you be that surprised if it was an all Leinster final? You wouldn't be. Would you be surprised if it was an all Munster final? No. Would you be surprised if it was the same pairing as last year? No. Uh, and that's what makes, and that's why it's great to have two weeks to build up to it. There's uh, so many fascinating kind of ponderables. Yeah, and Rim Gilburn says the first round against Cork in 2022. Yeah, I was down there at that game in Parky Creep and they absolutely battered them. Pegleg Lonergan says, question for the tip man, who will retire from tip, do you reckon? I would imagine that, like Seamus Callan was Tipperary nothing, maybe 35 later in the year, a lot going on personally as well, like between business and work and, work and all that, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I'd imagine he probably will. Um, I'd say Bonner Maher's a bit of a 50-50. I'd imagine no player likes to go out you know, when you don't have an opportunity to play in the last game. So I'd say that would be quite frustrating for him. I'd imagine Noel McGrath will stay on for one more year. And after that, I don't think anybody. I think the, the age profile is relatively strong beyond that. So that would be my guess. To, uh, like Tipperary oh Seamus Callan, a huge debt of gratitude for the career that he's had so far. So, uh, But it'll still be up to him. Um, would you have any thoughts on that? No, Sarah? I'd probably, I, I, I'd imagine Noel would stay in the fact that he was captain this year. Um, and like he played as good a hurling this year as he has in the last five or six years. So I'd be surprised if he didn't stay on. The other two lads might go, Seamus has had a horrible time with injury the last couple of years. Even this year, he had the, the media ligament in his knee. He hasn't really had a clean run in four or five seasons. Probably hasn't had a clean run since he was hurt of the year, being honest. 